Hi everyone, my name is Mrs B and you've come to the Art Life YouTube channel. Here at Art Life, my aim is to create art lessons for you that are fun, engaging and achievable at home or in your classroom. And if you're able to subscribe, that would really support me to help me create more lessons for you in the future. So come with me today and I will show you how to create this three step artwork of bubbles. is actually super easy and all you need are some washable markers. You don't need any paint even though it looks like you do. We're going to turn our drawing with these markers into paint using water and create a bubbly artwork that I'll guide you through and teach you step by step how to create something like this. You do need a few things for this bubble blowing based task today. Now for the main part of the task you will need some washable markers. The washable part is really important. It means that the colors will blend and wash when you add water. If you're using a permanent marker like a Sharpie, this won't happen. Things like the Faber Castell Connect pens, they are all washable. 90% of these sort of textures or markers are washable. So you should be able to have a nice range of colors, whatever you have, but I've got a lot of aquas and blues and things like that for this particular bubble task. Another thing that you'll need is some watercolor paper if you have it. If you don't have watercolor paper, normal paper should be fine, but just watercolor paper is a little bit more forgiving with the amount of water we're going to be using. Another thing would be good to use is a grey lead pencil. You'll also need some water and a brush, as well as some circular things of different sizes, kind of like jar lids or bowls around the house that you can trace around to get a nice circle. Now I'm also going to be showing you an optional part of this task that involves creating some actual bubbles using a cup of water, some dishwashing liquid, a straw, and some blue food dye. I'm gonna be doing this first, but this part is optional and messy. So if you choose to, you might just prefer to skip forward to the bubble blowing um, watercolor exercise. But let's get started. For the first part of this task, we're gonna actually create a really bubbly kind of background on our watercolor paper here. So we just need one piece of watercolor paper. I've got a straw and I'm gonna fill my half a cup of water with some dishwashing liquid and quite a bit of blue food dye. Mix that around. This really is a fun part of the task and if you are willing, because it is a little bit messy, I do recommend it because the kids will just love it. What I do suggest though is setting up a bit of a station or putting some newspaper or paper down so that you don't make too much of a mess. The bubbles are likely to spill over and you might end up with a very messy surface if you don't pop something down. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually blow some bubbles using my dishwashing liquid kind of mixture here. We are not drinking this liquid. It won't hurt you, but it won't taste nice. So let's practice now blowing out, not in. All right, so we're always blowing out. I'm gonna do a nice big blow. And you can see there that the bubbles are coming up over the top of my jar here. And I'm gonna make a print of these bubbles onto my watercolor paper, just by pushing it on top like that. That didn't work very well. Let's try it again. Make a print on our paper. Excellent. So you just want a really light, bubbly kind of print. And we're gonna to continue to do that around most of the paper. Remember, blow. If you're wanting your bubbles to be a little bit darker, you'll just need to add a little bit more food dye. But because we're gonna be drawing bubbles over the top, it is actually quite good to keep it quite translucent like this. So 
So you don't want to cover the page too much that you can't see the actual bubble like kind of structure. You do want to keep these bubbles kind of obvious. Um, so don't keep going over the same area. You just end up with a bit of a bluey spongy mess. Um, so we do want to try to vary where we print the bubbles so that they, we're moving around the paper quite a lot. And you can see by surface, is already very messy. That's probably enough for now. I'm gonna let that dry completely before moving on to our next step. Now that my background's completely dry, I'm going to do the texture watercolor kind of bubble scene directly over the top. Now, if you chose not to do the bubble bowing aspect, you would just do this part onto plain paper. So I'm getting some different size jar lids and I'm just gonna trace over them extremely lightly we press too hard then we'll see the pencil mark and we don't really want to see that I've got a really little one here with my glue what you might choose to do as well is and I'll show you how to do this is draw sort of the suggestion of someone blowing bubbles. So I'm gonna leave this bottom right hand corner sort of bare um, so that we can draw that in at the end. Cool. So now we're going to use some water soluble textures or markers to create or to turn them into watercolor paint using water. So what you need to do is just very carefully outline this line. Now I'm gonna keep sort of the bottom right hand area there. So I'm actually not going to use texture in that section. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm not gonna connect those lines. I'm actually going to leave that. I'm going to color in around the edge a little bit, but I would love if you have different sort of shades of blue or turquoise, just to add them in as well. Just gives it a bit more of a tonal effect. Something you'll need to do freehand is draw in maybe a little shape that looks a bit like this on each of them. And we're gonna leave that bare. So we're not going to add water to that section. I'll outline it so you can see a little bit better what it looks like. See, it looks a lot like a bubble now. So this doesn't have to be super neat with your coloring but try to color with the direction of the circle. So don't color like this, outways like this, try to color in a round motion. You don't need to color in the entire thing. I don't even wanna add just a little bit of green as well, just so our artwork isn't too blue. I'm gonna repeat this for each of the bubbles that I've drawn. So this is where having lots of different shades of blue really helps because you can sort of make each bubble look a little bit different. Outline it in a different shade of blue, use different colors um, to add different details just so that they all look slightly different if you can. Now, if you're doing this task with really young children, I think they're probably gonna find it quite difficult to keep that really circular kind of shape. Um, so, Please try your best to keep it a circle, but obviously um, you might need a little bit more practice with your drawing and everything to, to get it that perfect circle. Just do your best. That's the next step done. As you can see, I have not been too picky with my coloring. I've just tried to keep in that kind of round motion, adding lots of different colors. I'm gonna see what happens when we add some water. 
So the cool thing about water soluble textures is literally that water turns them into paint. You can see there that the colors start to merge. So I'm trying to keep within this circle here and also keep with that sort of circular motion. And I'm gonna connect those lines now, but it might be a bit of a watery kind of line and that's cool. I try to avoid that that shape there of the shine of the bubble. Try to keep within the circle too as best you can. It is tricky. That looks awesome. So just repeat this process. I'm adding a fair amount of water, but not too much. If you use too much, it's very difficult to sort of control it within the space you want it to be in. So just kind of keep adding water if you feel like you need more. And this is where if you're using normal paper, you might find that the paper might get a bit bally if you're using too much water. Um, it sort of comes away a little bit. That's where watercolor paper is really good. we've used too much water and you can see I have here it's sort of pooling um, just grab a tissue and dab it on there and that will soak up some of the excess water as you can see beautiful well done turning water soluble markers or textures into paint. Now what I'm going to do is draw a bit of a suggestion of a profile of someone's face holding up a bubble blower and blowing out the bubbles there. It's an optional extra you might just choose to create an artwork of bubbles on their own but I'll show you how to do it if you'd like to. All right first using a grey lead pencil I'm just going to suggest someone's face. So the type of line that you're going to do at the start is just sort of an arch like this. Might be a little bit difficult to see with the pencil, but I'll, I'll definitely go over it so you can see. All right, and then we want to come in and then out for a little nose. In again. And then we want the lips sort of kissy lips like this, like they're blowing. chin and the neck. I'm going to draw the blower and just a suggestion of a hand here. You don't really have to draw much more than that. This is just a line at the moment but I'm going to fill that in with some water soluble markers. I'm going to use some black and some gray for this part. You might want to add in some details like a little fringe there, an eyelash. I'm going to colour this in just like I did with the bubbles and turn it into paint. This outside line is the most important because it is a silhouette. What you do on the inside isn't that big a deal, but keeping this line really crisp and the details obvious is the important part. Keep the water within your silhouette here. So it's as simple as that.
thanks so much for joining me here at Outlife today. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and if you did, just give me a thumbs up and make sure you've subscribed below so that you can view all my videos in the future and past ones as well. Thanks for joining me. Catch you later.